Hello everybody, uh, my name is Mattias uh, Adolfsson, uh, I'm a Swedish artist um, and I have been doing this uh, full time for about uh, 13 years. Uh, prior to that I used to do computer games but uh, in 2006 I started uh, posting stuff uh, online and uh, then I got so much uh, attention so I could uh, turn this into a career of sorts. Uh, I, when I do private stuff, I do use my sketchbooks like this. But also when doing commission, it's mostly on, on bigger papers, uh, stuff like this for a Swedish town. Um, I use traditional media, uh, just a fountain pen uh, and some um, some watercolors and uh, I scan it, scan it in, uh, in Photoshop and uh, that's more like uh, more or less it. Um, I will try to answer as many questions as you have uh, and I will then also kind of make a, a little uh, drawing presentation hopefully will work out uh, but it's um, uh, it's What's up, what I've been doing, and it's a uh, kind of when you are a freelance illustrator, you, you must be open for everything. And uh, the last two months, I've been uh, having this course on Domestica, and uh, I've been so happy with the, uh, the feedback and uh, all the wonderful stuff all your students have been making. I try to uh, keep up as much as possible, uh, commenting and uh, uh, answering your questions as much as I can. Uh, and it's been uh, quite uh, more or less my full-time job uh, the last couple of uh, weeks. But it's been very nice. I really love it. Um, when I uh, do my drawings, um, for most, when my private drawing, I would say, I, I don't really have a plan. I just sit in front of the paper. And uh, what happens, happens, because uh, it's just the way I did uh, when I was a child, uh, whatever happened, happened. And that's more or less uh, what I'm still doing. So uh, I really kind of enjoy this. Uh, I see drawing almost like a kind of meditation thing, especially when I do it on my own. So um, there's no real magic to uh, uh, becoming better at drawing. You just have to do it a lot all the time. Uh, and when I started in 2006, uh, I had, hadn't been drawing that much uh, while doing computer games. I kind of draw a little, but I didn't do it on a regular basis. But when I got this, uh, I started out with the blog, uh, I got had this thing that I really wanted to create something each day. And just by doing uh, something each day, uh, made me become, become better and better at uh, the things I do. because. Uh, starting out, I would say my drawings were kind of pretty crude and uh, not as uh, detailed and complicated that uh, they have become over the years. Um, so I will try to um, change the camera here so you can see. Uh, this is just a regular paper. Um, I think I have to go up uh, in scale a little bit. I, I tend to draw very small. Uh, it's something I just, over time, my drawings have become smaller and smaller. Um, just uh, something that happens. I think for me, drawing small uh, fills my drawing with more kind of charm and life. Uh, so when I want to draw uh, on larger scale, I often use this. Uh, brush pen, uh, then I can't make those small, small details that I would have to kind of uh, live with this, uh, the limitation of the pen because uh, uh, you can't uh, control the pen 100%. Uh, there's always something strange happening. And I think I will start with uh, uh, drawing myself uh, as I usually do when I start kind of uh, live feed sessions because Often when I don't really have uh, any inkling of what I'm going to 
to draw. Uh, this is kind of uh, open up the gates, uh, just having a, a fixed point. So if I'm really very tired and can't think of anything, I will start with myself. And I have a kind of, uh, my style is pretty uh, with a clean line. I don't really use uh, that much cross hatching. I know that's part of the, the course, uh, doing cross hatching. But I tend to keep the lines very, very clean. Uh, it's just something that I, I have come to, to prefer doing uh, while drawing. It's always those small kind of details when drawing hands. I know it's very difficult in the beginning to draw hands, stuff like that, but it's very good to practice those small details because when doing characters, uh, posing characters and uh, drawing hands fills uh, the drawing with so much character. So try to really think a little bit about, it doesn't have to be perfect, but just, uh, don't um, skip out of on, on those small details. You can just have one page with just uh, hand drawing if you want to. And now uh, I'm a little bit hungry, so I think I might do a, a cooking scene of some sort. And I, I tend also to to make them as uh, with things overlapping each other. It makes it also more interesting. So by just adding another character here, and I don't really, um, and by doing this, I do not have to draw everything on this character. So it's always a uh, kind of a short cut of uh, when you're tired of drawing something, you can just draw something in front of it. And I think it's uh, by doing lines directly, you can do it in, in a pencil uh, as well. But if you just do it directly, you don't have to draw each line twice. And it can be quite liberating. And if you stop thinking about uh, making mistakes and stuff like that and learn to live with the mistakes, because I kind of feel like uh, doing mistakes in drawings is part of what make them interesting if you work with the digital media can you can always do undo but when doing uh, drawings directly in ink you don't have that option i kind of think i really enjoy that with the drawing that is uh, all those little small errors make uh, drawings more interesting otherwise you could as well uh, uh, take a photo or something well, that's just my opinion, so uh, you shouldn't uh, listen to to everything I say. But uh, I kind of find it, uh, and it's just it's also so, also something you can kind of uh, learn uh, uh, by doing it over and over again. You get more and more uh, at ease drawing directly with ink. I have the, in this um, brush pen, uh, I have filled it with my favorite ink. Um, the Atramet is document ink, and it uh, dries really, really fast. So it's a, it's a great uh, ink to use. I think if you buy this kind of pen to brush pen, there is a pretty good ink, uh, but I'm not sure that is perfectly permanent. I think there's... Uh, some wash away when you use watercolors over it. This ink isn't perfect when you use uh, markers. 
uh, the alcohol in the market sometimes uh, wash away a little bit about a uh, little bit of the ink so it works best with the water soluble stuff I could would say that the themes in my drawing probably has, hasn't changed so much uh, over the years. I have uh, certain themes I kind of enjoy returning to. Uh, I used to study architecture and making houses and cities is also is always something uh, that I kind of enjoy. Um, I didn't get to be an architect, but I can still do my favorite kind of cities and houses. And I also kind of enjoy doing uh, like robots and machines. I tried to uh, study architecture. I started studying to be an engineer. So I wasn't really sure about uh, what I was going to do with my life growing up. And um, I think it's always, uh, you can always kind of change your, your path. Uh, it's really difficult to, when you're young, be uh, certain of what you're going to be. And when growing up, becoming an illustrator was really not an option. It was really difficult to kind of make a living out of it. I wouldn't say that it's super easy making a living out of it. Uh, I know a lot of artists struggle but if you can make it have, uh, work, it is really the best job uh, you can have because you have have freedom. You kind of your own boss. Each time you get a new commission, uh, you have a new boss, but uh, you only last for a couple of weeks, and then and you're free on your own again. And the advantage of uh, doing illustration is it uh, doesn't really me uh, matter uh, what country you are from. You're, you're still able to kind of get uh, commission work from all over the world. Uh, everything is so international. A couple of years ago, they said that uh, in order to have a real career, you had to move to New York, but uh, that's not at all true anymore. You can sit uh, in a little hut as long as you have internet or telephone. You can still reach out to the world. I would say that I could not have uh, managed to have this career that I have had uh, without the, the internet. So without it, I would still probably be making uh, computer games. It's just not a, a bad career, but um, it's more like a industry than a creative field. Yeah. But that's what I felt in the end. This is the two. I tend to use my family as a kind of. Uh, Uh, themes in my drawing uh, and I also make fantasy drawings of our home uh, that is not at all as our home is in reality but I kind of uh, like to kind of daydream when drawing I can kind of create uh, anything I want and that's um, a great a aspect of uh, drawing from your imagination you, you can create your own universe and that's also uh, the kind of illustrators I really admire are part of that uh, kind of universe world builders I would say it's also one of those uh, really good things with uh, when you start to um, to draw, uh, it's like you you're never bored. You can always uh, bring out your sketchbook and uh, just start drawing. So 
there's no such thing as a dull moment. There's always, we're so, we're able to become very self-sufficient. There's also a very kind of uh, a little tribal thing with the with drawing. Uh, if you go to another country, you can always meet up with other illustrators or artists, and it's kind of uh, you share the same. Uh, it's more, almost like you are more akin to to the, the artist than you are to the people that come from your country, and I really really like that. It's so nice going abroad and you can just kind of ask if someone wants to meet up and draw something. It's really, really, really nice. I think I will draw a little beer over here. Feel free to ask questions if it's, um, I will try to answer them. We had this um, big thunderstorm just uh, a couple of hours ago, so I uh, was afraid that uh, this uh, life here would not happen. Uh, Diego uh i did your course the art of sketching and i saw you always drawing directly in ink when you make complex drawings do you use pencil in case you have to do any changes uh it kind of depends uh if i do commission work uh i have to make uh, sketches uh, so uh, the commissioner can see uh and kind of do an okay uh, i i can't say i really enjoy that process uh, because it's I enjoy doing it directly. Over, over time, I become more, uh, it's possible for me to just do it in ink. But when I started out, I, try, I often made a grid and stuff like that. I tend not to change so much about the, um, the drawing. But um, nowadays, uh, when I do my private stuff, I don't do pencil at all. But it's just something you can, can learn by drawing a lot. Uh, Clement asks, hi Matthias, I enrolled your course and really happy so far. I have two questions. Do you use Moleskin 165 grams? Yes, I do. Uh, uh, I, uh, oh, sorry, uh, when you do the wash for shading, do you use diluted ink? Would a gray watercolor work as well? I tend to, uh, sometimes I use a gray uh, watercolor uh, and sometimes I use uh, use ink. So uh, anything goes actually. If you use ink, it can have a, a better layering quality. So uh, the, very often I just use watercolors. Uh, Samuel asks, hi Matthias, thanks for the live stream. How do you deal with the maintenance of your fountain pen when using pigmented ink? They tend to clog fountain pens. Well, uh, that's why I just have uh, the one or two pens. And when you draw constantly uh, with a pen, it may do not clog. So I haven't washed uh, my my fountain pens in in years but just constantly drawing and uh, if you let the ink flow uh, you don't need to but otherwise if you have a lot of pens you can it's, it can be a good practice to kind of uh, if you know that you're not going to draw uh, 
over a long time, you can let it rest and clean it out prior, prior to resting. Uh, question, you said you don't plan your drawings beforehand, but you, do you usually have a theme in mind? Um, it's kind of, you would say that sometimes I kind of have a theme like this when I started drawing me. And then I suddenly felt, oh, I'm a bit hungry. My my stomach started to kind of scream. And then I kind of made this uh, food theme for this drawing. And then I kind of continue with it. Uh, so it's uh, sometimes um, when I'm kind of uh, at a cafe or something, I can sit and I can watch what's happening. And I kind of uh, take, take what I see and kind of make that into the drawing. But uh, when I start out, most of the time, I don't really uh, have a theme. And often when starting doing a city scene, I can start with just a little sculpture on a roof, and then suddenly it becomes uh, a city or otherwise maybe a car. So I can always change uh, the direction of uh, each drawing. Thanks for the questions, really good questions. Um, <clears throat> uh, let's see, Samuel, uh, what is the logical next step in your mind between drawing yourself and your family and starting to draw something else? Um, yeah, I don't really know. It's a lot of questions like that. Uh, it's like I know how I kind of work work but i don't really understand it uh, and i don't really i don't think about the process i know a lot of people are really interested in the process but it's like uh, it's just something that happens and i that's just how my machine works uh, but i can't really explain it it's uh, it's um I would say I almost feel like yeah, I'm just the passenger and I just watch my hand draw whatever comes to mind. And often I'm just as surprised as anyone else about the, the result. But I guess my brain is probably very much awake. But I'm not, I really can't explain the process. Uh, Anthony Keenan. Hi, Matthias. You are always hope around from one part of the drawing to another and then back is that due to ideas coming at you uh, you don't seem to finish one part of a drawing at the time no it's like um, uh, as I don't really have a composition in mind I try to just overlap stuff to make it more interesting uh, and uh, the most important important part of this kind of when doing stuff like this is the things happening with the face and the things people hold in the, their arm and the action, the, the actual action. And then what's really, this part is not that interesting. So I try to do that last. So it's just uh, my way of uh, kind of layering the drawing, so to speak. Uh, Jojo Brown, what would you say to someone who wants to be at your level of artistry so they can go to art school or make a living of 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 drawing? Um, I'm one of those people that has more or less uh, learned everything on my own. Uh, at first, I started learning uh, computers when very young, and I started programming, and I learned that myself. I went to uh, design, I studied graphic design, but the, the illustration and uh, learning 3D modeling stuff like that, I did on my own. So it's really difficult for me to kind of, the thing, the nice thing when going to art college is that you have the, the time for experimentation and you might be lucky to have a really good teacher, uh, but you can as well, and nowadays you can really learn through online sources and courses like that. The most important thing when learning to draw is the actual just sitting down and doing it a lot. 
and I would say that I was really lucky with the working with kind of professional in the computer game industry. Learned a lot about working with large projects. So, but that's something you have to learn on your own, uh, starting out as an illustrator, because all paths are completely different. Uh, Branka, Jokish, uh, hi Matthias. I love your art and style. You talk about how you tra how you transition into doing illustration full time for work. How do you get about getting commissions client? Do you reach out to projects you want to be involved in? Uh, uh, I have been lucky in that regard uh, that uh, clients have been reaching out to me. Uh, so I haven't really had to uh, go out and search for for commission. Uh, so um, that can be a really tricky problem because uh, there's a lot of wonderfully gifted artists but they don't really get seen so uh, I've had a lot of luck getting clients so uh, but I would say that keeping a good uh, media presence uh, uh, what do you call it uh, social media presence and trying to kind of be seen is that has worked for me and it might work for other people as well uh paul fox when you are when you are working on a commission do you need a press need to present a few concepts to a client or do you just run with the idea and present them a finished concept no almost always you have to uh, uh, do a sketch uh, or a concept so uh, very seldomly i have completely free hands it's always kind of a process with, with all uh, uh commission work um so uh, it's completely different from the way i work otherwise uh, mariana suarez i'm sorry i'm butchering all names here but uh, hello matthias i love your course and i really enjoy the way you work what would you recommend recommend to develop a style of your own would you say that there are some key steps or milestone that could help you create your own style um It's also something that I haven't really thought about. Uh, I just kind of uh, started to draw, and uh, what has become my style is something just that has been evolving. I hadn't really put that much because I kind of just draw for my own and I didn't really think it could be a occupation so uh, I didn't look at other illustrators so I think I don't really know uh, you have to kind of find it your own your own way there is a lot of uh, if you look at the, the illustration at the moment there's a lot of uh, things that look kind of the same so trying to kind of making uh, something that stand out from the crowd it is seems banal but um, trying to find something unique and then but the key is always to really draw very very much and uh, suddenly perhaps you will find oh this is something that i really this sound feels interesting and kind of go <laughs> go all the way it's a very difficult question sorry i can't really give a good answer uh sang he and how many hours do you draw a day approximately and what is your preferred moments those days um it's really i would say maybe four hours each day i used to draw much much more but um it's, i think my style has become more complex and uh, then it kind of takes a little bit more energy <laughs> all the time to draw so uh, i get tired and i i don't really i don't like to draw uh, uh, evenings i prefer mornings and uh, the day i work with computer games there was so much over time so i kind of when the clock is too late i kind of i don't really want to be doing it anymore uh Jose. Uh, hi Matthias, I am doing your course with my daughter Luna, 10 years old. She loves drawing 
and is very excited with the course. And advice for a little artist? Yes, uh, for a little artist, it's uh, just don't stop drawing. So uh, that's uh, kind of the key to becoming a good artist is just to uh, always draw. And uh, I would say that most of the illustrators uh, that work in the, th in, in the field, they they haven't stopped and a lot of uh, children they draw up till uh, maybe 12 13 years and they then they just quit something other stuff becomes more interesting but if you just continue doing it it's uh, it uh, can become a career uh, alberto i love your art here is alberto from peru uh, i always wanted to draw and i'm just starting at my age of 62. Do you have any experience or comments about our other students my age? Uh, it's never too late to uh, to start. Um, there's a very, one of Sweden's most famous uh, uh, contemporary artists started uh, uh, doing her art uh, when she was uh, 70. So, uh, and it's uh, it can bring another kind of, uh, you have, <laughs> done so much other stuff so that might do uh, make your art more interesting so uh, just go for it i would say miroslav uh, hi matthias what city is the most inspiring for you and would you like sweden to be less uh, snow um what city uh well i've always been very interested by uh, uh, antiquity so a lot of the the cities in uh, in italy really kind of um, i love like rome is is wonderful and uh, siena and uh, but I'm also very fascinated by the cities in uh, in Asia, uh, so uh, like Hong Kong and uh, so. Um, but I, I I enjoy traveling almost everywhere. I've been quite a lot of places. Now I can't travel, but um, uh, I I really enjoy most cities. <laughs> Uh, uh no i i enjoy snow i i love go out and uh, go cross skiing and uh this year we didn't have any snow so uh no uh i enjoy uh, the seasons uh during the dark uh, parts of this uh, of the year you can sit in and uh, really concentrate on your drawing so it's uh no uh, for me it's uh, I, I enjoy the snow. Jafar, uh, hi Matthias, and thank you for the fantastic course. After finishing the perspective lesson, I started digging deeper into this subject, which is frustrating since it is sometimes so complicated. Any advice for your side on how far I should go with studying this subject? Well, um, it's always it's good to uh, kind of... Um, uh, study and uh, really learning the techniques uh, but sometimes if you use uh, too much the technique it can become pretty stiff so i would say try learn as much as possible uh, but for me kind of being loose with technique always is more interesting i would say but uh, it doesn't hurt to to know what you're doing it, it can become extremely complicated and if you feel it takes the joy out of uh, drawing you should uh, at least take a minute's rest <laughs> sometimes elizabeth uh, Wong, i like art but i have struggled to be consistent with my sketchbook practice what would you recommend to create the habit um it's like they say if you want to have a, a new habit you have to do it at least 66 days or something like that if you start to work out you have to do it for 66 days i would say 
try uh, keep it up for 66 days and uh, because for me it's like uh, drawing is fill me with a sense of joy and I really feel very good drawing and uh, if you just get over that step that it's uh, frustrating you might uh, find yourself with a new habit Marty Ed, how did you experience working in the game industry affect what you're doing today uh, it, it really uh, working with games it's uh, so complicated uh, you can sit and work with something you can work with the project for a half a year and then someone just cancel the complete project and everything you've been working on for the last year is just uh, wasted so and that happened to me <laughs> once um, and it's like also when you work with those complicated scenes they take so long time and so much stuff happens you can sit for a whole day and the computer crashes then you lose everything so doing really complicated drawing has become much easier for me now because it's so concrete the drawing is on the paper and whatever happens the paper can't crash so that has probably learned me to have the patience i need to to do complicated scenes um the hardest part to build and maintain your portfolio well it's kind of the same there uh, i have been so lucky in my career that i don't really have to i've never had a kind of illustrator's portfolio so uh, it's like uh, and i've steered my career to uh, more becoming a kind of a free artist I, I sell a lot of books and, and originals and prints so i don't really need to do that much commission work uh, anymore and that's really a wonderful for me it's a wonderful state to be in because i don't really have to think about the portfolio thing so i would think that probably a lot of other people are better at answering uh, that question because I just I'm so lucky I can draw whatever I want and uh, my portfolio is uh, it's about 2,000 drawings or something like that <laughs> sorry You should probably kind of um, update it and uh, uh, yeah, but the other people are better at answering that. Sorry, uh, Cynthia. Cynthia, uh, what materials do you recommend the most for beginners? Uh, it's, it's always, I tend to be difficult to kind of recommend stuff because uh, it's so personal. You really have to try for yourself. But I would say. Uh, you shouldn't buy too expensive materials so you're really kind of afraid uh, don't buy the most expensive sketchbook don't buy the most expensive uh, fountain pen you can get a really good fountain pen for Let's see if i can find it if you want to buy try a fountain pen you can try this uh, carbon pen it's really really nice to use when it comes to quality uh, when you start if you have a a career as an illustrator the materials compared to buying a computer the pen and the, the watercolors are not that expensive but i know it can be expensive in the beginning you get better watercolors if you pay, pay a little more and the same for brush but in the beginning try the cheap materials and when you can go for the more expensive stuff it's always very difficult to to know um mariana thank you for answering my question matthias have you made any mistake in this particular drawing how do you work around that it's uh, just i don't think about uh, mistakes it's um uh, when you don't have the, the the image in your head starting out 
you can't get disappointed. It's uh, what the image becomes is what the image is. So, uh, so it's very. I don't get disappointed, and I made so many drawings. And looking back, I don't even think about uh, uh, if I had any mistakes. I don't really. I don't think. And I don't see it. I, and I, for most of the time, I don't really remember doing the drawing because uh, it's just its process. Uh, so no. But the, I would say that the perspective is probably not one hundred percent. It doesn't really matter. It's, uh, it's just one of one more drawing. Thomas, do you listen to music when you draw? And if you do, is there anything uh, you recommend? Yes, I listen to music. Uh, but it's the same thing. What I like is a uh, very special kind of music. I tend to draw to listen to. Uh, uh, a lot of uh, house uh, music because I think uh, for me drawing is like dancing. It's a, it's a dancing I do with the pen in my hand. So uh, I, I really you go with the flow, and if you have a nice groove with the music, you kind of just uh, follow follow the music. And for me, it's really kind of difficult sitting in the a silent room drawing. I really prefer to to have some kind of uh, noise. But at the moment, I'm listening to a lot of uh, uh, the it's a radio show called uh, Glitterbox Ibiza, and I follow them on uh, uh, on SoundCloud. So there's a lot of uh, happy house and uh, <laughs> disco, I guess. I, I started out because uh, loving uh, rock music and very. But um, I've changed. I can listen to it sometimes, but I prefer dance music. Uh, Jaeger, when you compare your character model style with the style when you were 10, 10 or 15 years old, did the basic design change much? How long did it take to find your look and be consistent? Um, when I started to study in uh, to become an architect, I started uh, keeping a sketchbook. And looking back at those drawings now, I, you can see that there's a seed of my style. But I would say that my um, the character style has become more uh, correctly posed, uh, and I'm more at ease uh, doing more complicated uh, poses. So that's the biggest uh, difference, I would say. Emilie, Emilie? Hey, Matthias, any recommendation on good scanners for artwork? Mine has died in the last few weeks, so in the market for a new one. Thanks, and love the class. I have a, a large A3 scanner, Epson uh, ET2000, and it's, uh, it's very good. It's very nice to have the uh, A3 scanner because I do a lot of uh, large format artwork, and then I can just uh, do maybe three or four scans and then there's this great uh, thing in the Photoshop that you can photo merge them uh, automatically. So, uh, but I guess this comp scanner is probably 10 years old, so there might be more modern, but uh, having an A3 scanner has been wonderful for me. I'm not sure that scanner technology has uh, kind of evolved that, <laughs> that much. It's kind of certain aspects of uh, progress doesn't really happen that fast. Camille, uh, hi Matthias, when do you decide your drawing is done? Uh, when I'm out of paper, I would say. Uh, it's actually a kind of a good question because uh, the last drawing I did in my sketchbook, uh, this one, uh, I kind of I had uh, made all the characters on the side, and I was wondering if I should just do it like a frame and have this space open for some text or something. But then I just kind of, and I was kind of bored drawing, drawing <laughs> this drawing. But then I just decided to go the complete uh, uh, distance. And, um, but then it's kind of, 
when there's not that much space i just kind of it's just something i feel in feel inside okay this is finished i don't want to and some drawings are really i would say there's no space left and then i just uh, i can't continue Let's see if i can find one of those yeah like this there's no space left and then i'm kind of finished it's a good question daniel uh, how do you uh, how do you cleanly draw some objects in front of others without planning um it just comes down to uh been doing it enough times for kind of making it hardwired into you into your mind but it's uh, for me you should always do what feels best for you it's, it's nothing if you do a pencil sketch before fine it uh, this is just the way i work but it's no it's not a better or more uh, clean way of doing it it's just the way i do it so it, it's not for everyone i know so uh, I will not look down on you if you use pencil first. And when doing commission, I have to, to do the planning first. So and that's one of the reasons I kind of prefer not to do commission if I can help it. Uh, Clement, um, how long does it take to you on average to complete the fill sketchbook when i started out it took about half uh, no uh, it took about two months so in the beginning i kind of filled them out very fast but i would say now about half a year for each sketchbook um, and i have now i have some larger sketchbooks so it might take even longer time so but about uh, half a year for each sketchbook i can see when i started this last one i started this uh, the 12th february so that would take uh, and it's about uh, i'm not sure if you can see i think this will be probably finished in uh, november that's my prediction so um a bit longer christina nilsson sounds swedish uh, hi when you have scanned an illustration what is that you do with the drawing in photoshop uh i do uh i have a uh what do you call it a macro that uh, takes all the black lines because i lose uh, some uh, blackness when i scan and it makes a, a black copy over the drawing uh, and then i save it so i i tend not to do anything uh, with the drawing in photoshop um, so on occasion, uh, I can add, if it's a commission, I can make small alteration, but it's not, not something I'm really good at. So I prefer not to. I'm very thank you so much for the question. Oh, Cynthia, uh, we would like to see more of your notebooks. Uh, they look amazing. Well, uh, at the moment, I don't really have uh, my publisher has, has all my <laughs> my notebooks, but I can show what's what I've been doing. Uh, this is the first page. I always like nowadays. I always say starting date. Uh, is it just 
some characters. I kind of start with something and then kind of locks myself to this theme. And uh, this I was uh, reading a lot about those quantum computers. So I made a, a quantum computer. And this is my wife, and she has a, another set of computers and just graphic cards. I'm not sure. I really enjoy doing um, complicated machinery. It's also something that I kind of just started doing this frame. Uh, and also, I didn't really know should I leave just the frame empty? Uh, but then I just kind of switched ink and went for a maritime theme. Some characters on uh, boxes. Uh, some puppet theater. And this is uh, two imaginary comic books. This also sounds strange. I just started doing the, those characters on a um, on a kind of a ladder, and then I just kind of made the monsters. I didn't really have a plan for it. And on occasion, I do this kind of question and answer thing, uh, where I kind of answer each question I get a lot, like what pen and what ink you're making, and do you have the image in your head when starting out? So uh, I post them maybe each two or three months and then I just <laughs> do another one because I get the same question so much and this is uh, kind of our living room but it's like very free it's kind of a I would say it's a one point perspective uh, just uh, and it's also kind of virus related I kind of did my versions of different viruses and this is uh, well. It might. It's part of the. Th I did two images when I had been in Madrid doing the, the course, and it's like such a strange thing, kind of uh, being in front of cameras. So I kind of did different drawings revolving around those themes. For me, it's not something that is given. I enjoy being in front of a com of a camera. <laughs> <laughs> really difficult talking in front of a camera. Just a crowd. It's also this uh, putting th things in front of other things. I just start with one, and then I suddenly it's more no no more space, and then I'm finished. And the city scene. It's also when I we have been lucky. We have been able to walk around not as many countries in a lockdown but i kind of long for the for traveling to the riviera or stuff like that so uh, well it's just uh, each day i just kind of draw something new so it's uh, and this is uh, the last and i also try to <laughs> some strange way i start at the beginning uh, and also start at the end of the sketchbook so i always have two different starts. Um, so uh, I think I'm starting to, uh, uh, this is uh, the start of something new, I don't know what it is. Uh, I have time for a, a couple of more questions, uh, but otherwise uh, the live show is um, kind of uh, finished down, but I can maybe uh, two more questions if you have it. See if I can do some more lines here as well. It's always uh, kind of a strange thing having a camera. Now this camera is pretty high up, but when I do other kind of live feeds, I always have the camera kind of is a little bit in the way <laughs> of the actual drawing. So it's really it's not an easy, easy situation drawing. Jessica, uh, I often struggle with applying color to my illustrations and found relief in using paper cutouts and watercolors. Have you always worked with paint to apply colors to your drawings? Have you exper experimented struggle with other mediums with thanks from London? Uh, starting out, I had terrible... Uh, uh, what do you call it? Self. I, I, I 
was really couldn't really apply colors. I, I I'm a bit colorblind, so I was very sensitive to <laughs> making wrong, making kind of like I can still do it, making green characters. Um, I don't really see see the right colors. So it took me a long time to start using color. So finding watercolors for me was kind of okay. This I can work with because it's always a bit randomness in the process for me. So yes, but nowadays I don't tend to kind of experiment with new media. So it takes so long time to find your own style, and for me to find a new one is I, is not possible. And do, how do you inspire yourself? Uh, well, it's when when you get to that state when to really be able to really feel good, <laughs> you have to draw because it's something you you have perfect control over it. You don't really need the, the inspiration. I get very much inspired by kind of traveling, seeing new stuff. But for me, uh, the inspiration Inspiration is something I can just pluck out of my own mind. So uh, I, I don't really have to to search for inspiration. I know that a lot of people struggling with that, but uh, I don't. Uh, would you share the final result with us in the forum? Of course. I'm not sure when I will. Uh, I think I would. I can post it as uh, as long as I reach now, but I will probably apply some colors to it later. Then I, I will share that as well, of course. Uh, it's been very nice. Thank you so much for your great questions. Uh, it's always a strange the first part <laughs> when you just speak out uh, into the void, but it's always kind of uh, get the feedbacks with the question so you really the idle thing would be to to able to hear you speak as well because um, um, yes I would switch the camera so and I, I could say this is my studio um, I actually sit over here uh, and this is my computer and this is my wife's computer but she has another uh, studio so we uh, most of the time I'm alone in the studio so uh, it's a it used to be a garage but we when we moved into this house we had it uh, built so for me it works great to have uh, the studio in the, in my house because I don't have to commute anywhere but she really likes to to kind of separate uh, and meet other people i tend to meet people when i travel but otherwise i just sit in sit at home and <laughs> do nothing um but we, very nice uh, we must do this again um uh, very nice questions and i'm uh, very happy with the course and i love seeing all all what you're creating in the forum and i really try to see everything uh, I have chose not to see uh, uh, your influences because that was too much but uh, otherwise I try to see as much as possible so goodbye la idea es como algo muy frágil se me fue la hebra I'm going to show you some examples this is what we've got behind me ¿qué más preguntas tengo por aquí? ¿cómo descubriste que lo tuve?